way back we've been friends since way back made in since way back how it's been since way back since back then can't change that we've been yeah pretty cool pretty cool. yeah very, very stoked i'm pretty excited i like they always choose great music oh yeah that always gets me i think sorry more That's than okay. uh, more than anything else i think their choice of music always like is appropriate and the tone is really good and it like belies the like dark nature of this this you know background most mm -hmm. of the time and it's interesting like the growing up thing and like you said if they did one or two more of these i'd be just fine three or four seasons are the sweet spot for these i think yes that's what i said about four seasons yep because it's third season now yep third season now yeah, I'd be happy with just the four. And maybe you, five. And five you, okay, I mean, maybe. and it depends. The problem is once you hit five, then people are just like, it's been around so long, it becomes that show that it's like, oh, you got to go watch this show because it's amazing for four seasons. And then they're like, oh, well, we got all these new viewers on the fifth season because it's so popular and it blew up. So we're going to make a sixth season because yeah. we got the money. You know, th I feel like that's what happens with shows like, and there's tons of shows where, and don't get me wrong, they have later good seasons in my opinion, a lot of people don't agree with those. But things like Scrubs, Futurama. I love Futurama. Um, Never to a lesser to Scrubs. extent, Family Guy. It's it was pretty more good. of a dry humor. It, it is a I very, don't, don't like, like dry. Humor. It's a very dry intellectual humor. And one of the things I like about Scrubs that's kind of like probably most people don't give a crap about <laughs> <laughs> is the uh, fact that it's like one of the most accurate medical shows in history. Yeah, I've like, heard that before. Like, and on most of the, like, surveys and, like, things where they ask doctors, Scrubs ends up being number one, mm -hmm. even above, like, Grey's Anatomy and shows like that, where there is some level of, like, accuracy. But just, like, they, apparently the writers were all, like, former medical interns oh. or stuff like that. Much in the way well, like, that... helps. Yeah. <laughs> much in the way that, like, Futurama writers are, like, a lot of, a lot of them are, like, for, former Harvard students and professors and shit, yeah. which people don't realize. They didn't do a good job on uh, Disenchanted, though. <laughs> to be fair, I don't know if the same writers are there. That's the same oh, okay. creative head, right? Matt Groening and... Oh, okay, okay. okay. But th that's not to say they have the same writing writers, staff. Writers, yeah. Right. True. Which people forget that, yes, you have your lead creative person, Seth MacFarlane, uh, you know, whoever um, it is for Robot Chicken. Who does, uh, uh, Seth MacFarlane? No, it's uh, Green. Oh, uh, yeah, the guy from... I know you're talking about with the redhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seth Green? No. Yeah, Seth Green. Seth yeah, Green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's funny that they're all the fucking Seth Green. That's, but yeah, that's yeah. why I wanted to say Seth again, because it was... Yes, and so he said Farley McGreen. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, Matt Groening. And then uh, uh, Rick was... and Marty. What's yeah, uh, Dan, Dan Harmon. Dan Harmon. Dan Harmon and uh, Justin... I Roland. Roiland? Yeah. Yep, Justin we'll Roiland. Which is funny, because I never remember people's names. It's great. Hey, Leo, thanks for joining oh, us. Oh, hey, Leo. Down. Uh, I'm gonna but, go see This Is Us, or no, it's not just, us. just, it's just us. us. Yeah, I'm gonna go see Us. Maybe. I'm gonna see Hopefully this tonight. M All right, and if here's my thing nobody's coming with me, I'm going by myself. I, I don't care. I'm super just, excited because it. I've heard really good stuff, but I wasn't, like, blown down by, like, comments the, the, for this the, one. The thing is, I just, I like the way he kind of goes and approaches his horror movies, and it's oh, he different. Has a, even, and that was my thing, like, I, and that's what people don't get from me, is, like, I enjoyed Get Out. I feel like, for me, it, Get Out was probably it. Eight out of ten. Yeah, the memes, the memes are the, the best. I, it, the memes are great, and after <laughs> you see them, they're great. My thing about it, and it's the same thing that ruined a couple other movies for me, in terms of like when I hit them critically, was that I was rushed with all these critical things of like this is John Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer was another one. Which was that one? Uh, it's the one from Netflix about the dude on the train in the ice world. Ah, uh, I think I've seen that. Somebody told me about that. We're like, yeah, they have to live in the train because the outside world is all like frozen. all frozen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, Somebody it, told me it about that It is one. good, but when I saw it, my film buddy friend from college is like, dude, you got to see this. It is groundbreaking, <laughs> the concepts and the twists <laughs> behind it. And I'm just like, oh, for this film critic, but oh, there's Leo. All right, phenomenal. I love Get Out and Us was wow. You'll love it. Sweet. Yeah. But I'm happy. I'm so I'm, excited. I'm, I'm super be excited for it. I had to, I've got to wait. I got other shit to do. And I got an early morning tomorrow, which is always shitty. But hey, it's Friday. Well, but what I was saying is for that <clears throat> piercer, it's it's good. It's a good movie. It really, especially it I know it was Netflix, on Netflix like a while but back. But it is no genre breaking end of the line turn, you know, Shyamalan mm. Even, you know, and I'm just like, man, I watch anime. You're going to have to wake up a lot earlier in the morning <laughs> to hit me with twists harder well, than this. 
So uh, did you did you watch the you watched the John Wick uh, trailer then, huh? I have watched the John Wick trailer, which it looks. I'm trying to remember if I watched it. I think I watched like a little bit. I can't really remember too much. Oh yeah, I do remember. That's what it was. Probably throw it on. It was. uh, It was kind of just left off where two was, where the yeah they're chasing him. Yeah, they're gonna kill him. They got the the bounty on his head. Everyone's gonna come kill him, even his old friends. Nobody, nobody's gonna kill him. Yeah, of course not. No, actually, and this is my prediction. I think he is gonna die at the end. Yeah, that would that would make sense. I feel like it would be a fitting. Yeah, trilogy. And especially, the, but having said that, I think he'll still win. Yeah, to, at the very end. Somehow, yeah. yeah. I don't know exactly how that'll work or what the storyline will be said behind. And if well, not, maybe they'll he just gets make shot it like a few times and he just keeps going. Well, at and it. my bigger thing is they'll probably do more of the, oh, he died, but did he really die? No, yeah, that would be great. You know that would yeah. be great, though. That would be the best where it's like, he got shot 87 times he and fell into the water, but we never picked up the body. <laughs> well, he must be dead. <laughs> Bang. Who did that? It doesn't even show just the gun smoking. You know, I don't know. I know that would be a real dick move for a lot of people, but it's just so funny to be for those ones where it's like, he's gone. Ha ha. Oh. So yeah, I yeah I do remember watching a little bit of it, dude. Now. Yeah. It, um, yeah, I'm excited to see that one as hey, well. man, guns on horses and shit. It's fun. Oh yeah, he was riding a horse. That's right, y'all. <laughs> uh, it kind of remind me a little bit of uh, Shaun of the Dead. That's, oh, that's my, or not uh, Shaun of the Dead, the uh, Hot Fuzz. Oh, okay, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was he, about to say Shaun of the Dead. I don't think. No, had yeah, any remember, horses, yeah, when he comes but, at the very end with the just, horse, and yeah, he's fucking people. That's just, and they're riding through the mini town. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's a just, good one. I just watched uh, their newest one that they did together, Nick Frost and uh, Simon Pegg. Uh, it's called one? Slaughterhouse. Oh, I haven't seen it. I heard about it being released recently. Yeah, it was just a direct to on demand kind of thing. To be fair, some of their stuff ends up that way. Some of them make it to the big screen too, but I'd say it's a good. Like Paul. What was it? Which Paul was kind of very disappointing a little bit. I mean, yeah. I was, was... you know, from the trailer, that's what it was. The trailers did a 180 on me, basically. Because it said it was this, and then when I really went to go see it, it was not at all. Yeah, it was a little different. It, the, the thing was, it was much that more That was going like, to be like a nerdy kind of like... Comedy alien. stoner thing, yeah. Yeah, there but, was not very much comedy for them being kind no, of funny guys. Realistically, I, I felt and then, like it and was more Seth introspective. And then being yeah. the voice. Yeah, I feel like it was a much more introspective movie than a comedy movie. Like, it was a lot more That's about what I thinking heard from about a lot of people alien that There was a lot of backlash, like, I think, from the movie. That but, I, remember. I mean, it, they were coasting off of, one, the funny voices of, like, TV and film being these main characters. Because Ted was also, I feel like, wasn't that in the same area of time release? I think Ted actually came out a little bit after that. Maybe right, but like that being two, my point well, is two, that they two, went... Two years after, maybe? I don't know. I'm hey, too well, sure. Let's check it out. We got time. All right. It was Ted and Paul. Hopefully Ted... Moved. Paul, I want to say, came out like 2009 or 10. Okay, and then Paul maybe. And Ted, I want to say, came out like 11. Maybe a year after. Paul. So it's one in one, and it's 2011, 2012, which is actually a pretty good one so to one for. Who was first? Uh, that would be Paul, but okay. that's that being the same. So it's just still... a year after, basically. yeah. Okay. Which, like I said, at that point of 2011, 2012, I feel like we moved from what used to be the mainstay of animation voices being with animation voice actors mm. to being pop and celebrity voices. Be in the cases of like Nicki Minaj, we got a lot more Seth Farlin, or it's not Seth MacFarlane, Seth Rogen mm-hmm. doing animated voices in the case of that. Then we had whatever Sausage Party. There, oh, yeah, I mean, there's several examples, but they really did start reaching in and grabbing more of those like. Which also, speaking of pop culture and celebrity, moving over back and forth, we've had Batista, but Missy Elliott doing Umbrella Academy. Yeah, that was uh, that I was, thought that was that interesting. Was, I didn't even really like. I didn't kind of. I, could, I knew it was her but... because I, I already heard that she was casted. But See, like yeah, I the thing, the it, thing so. was that like when I watched it and I seen that was she I was definitely like, she didn't. Was... I think she did a really good job acting because yeah, she that's didn't I mean. have that. Well, and obviously she probably does the same for being Missy Elliott. You know, that's such a, that's a persona vibe. Uh, thanks for joining, Thomas. Just discussing yeah. trailers and recent I thought, movies. I thought but... she did a good job though in that. In oh that yeah, show. I really her did. Her and uh, Hazel. Was yeah, that yeah. His name? Was... And I, I guess in the comics, actually, they're both girls. Oh yeah, interesting. Uh, that's what somebody was telling me from the comic store. He's like, yeah, the the assassins are are both girls. 
Because he's read the books before and he's I feel, really into I'm it. I'm not going to lie. I feel like the dynamic, one, would be totally different. And two, I might not personally enjoy it much, as much just as a male. And that's like a, obviously a gender biased mm-hmm. view. But that's just because having him there is like an interaction of ploy that I can like relate to. So I know why they did it. But not saying not saying it's better either way, because mm-hmm. obviously uh, staying I, yeah. the original source. But just saying that, like, I can see why they would do that because a lot of the interactions and dynamics that I liked about those two throughout that series would have been different. And not saying they wouldn't have been relatable, but it would have been an entirely different dynamic. Yeah, that's why if you think about it, Hazel is more of kind a of a girl's name, name yeah. a, little a little bit, bit yeah. And I'm surprised that with the change in gender, you wouldn't do a change in name to make just a new character. Yeah, I think Gerard Way, though, really wanted his characters to all kind of be the same. And I uh, mean, like, if you go even Space Boy is really, like, different from the comics. He he looks like a monkey in the, that's, in the comics. I know, but I would have preferred that more to the half. Like I said, that was... And he looks like things. an astronaut. It kind of looks... You know what's weird? He looks like he's wearing an astronaut sh- suit because he's got kind of like this... Um, you know, like where the headpiece would yeah. spit on. He's got this kind of ring around his neck. And it just, I don't know, the way they kind of do it. it just I thought it like looked a lot bad. better in the comics. That yeah. was just me. I thought it Oh, you've good. seen the... You've yeah, seen I've the, seen the art and stuff. I just haven't read a lot of the comics. I've seen all the yeah, characters. Yeah, I, I, I kind of started reading a couple. I read the free comic book day one. That's Nice. It's really good. I, I like these characters that he's made up in uh, these books. They, that, I think that really is what drew me in more because... As the like I said, for me the first episode was a bit slow uh, to the ending fight scene, but what kept me on was one the unique nature of a lot of the characters and their interactions, right? And my favorite is just the one that he comes up with is the white violin. I like that like that name that he comes up for the code name, and then just the power set that he kind of just made up, you know, for this character. Right. They definitely. That I'm, his naming scheme is really good, actually. I mean, most of the names, and what I like about it is it's very retro name styling. Yeah, he likes. Uh, he was a very big fan of uh, Doom Patrol. He loves. Oh, uh, Grant you Morrison's. can definitely see a lot of Doom Patrol. He's in got. This. He loves Grant Morrison's. Uh, like you Doom can, Patrol. you can he see even, the. Uh, uh, I don't know if you knew, but he uh, he relaunched uh, Doom Patrol, and he no, wrote, wrote for a little bit now. I didn't even he heard did, much uh, about the new Doom Patrol, but I know they have their series. Yeah, so, yeah, that was that. And then, Jim uh, Carrey, which is a pretty He also name made his own uh, imprint for DC, but uh, they're, they're about, they're closing it down now, but it was only just, it wasn't permanent, it was just for a little right, bit. Right. But he limited. came up with some, like, and I, he co, maybe, you know, co-writed maybe, I think they came out, like, with six different books through that imprint. That's not bad. And they were all pretty good. That's good. What have, have you read? Any it's of called the Young new... Animal. I think that that's what the that imprint was called. Have you read any of the new DC stuff? Their new lines, uh, and not speaking on like new Batman, new, but like their new character lines, like Brimstone and Rampage and stuff. I hear they're yeah they're they're closing all those characters down. So Rampage seems to be the only one going still. Yeah, they just closed down Sideways. Oh right? man, yeah. Which funny it, enough, it looks like the... a lot of their characters, like their new characters, kind of just didn't to be stick. fair. When was the last real new character and i mean real new character not a new version of an old character like a successor in the oh, line or a hybrid like, you like cosmic ghost rider you mean kind of like uh even yeah even to that point like just a, an entirely new character but yeah and and um, for dc more than marvel because i feel marvel like just i feel like constantly they, they're, they're, yeah new. they're pumping way too much Kid kaiju and, is probably one of my favorites of their new generation because his power <sighs> was really unique but I feel like they're, they're just doing too much of like these new characters at one point. Because yeah. then it's like now at that point, it's like a cash grab. Because then like, they, they know speculators are going to want to go for those new characters. But then they, those characters really don't go nowhere. And yeah, then well, it depends if on they the do, character. then maybe some writer goes, hey, for... I kind of want to write some more about this character. Let me bring him in again. Yeah. And he does a good job. But Well, it depends that... on sales, too. So like, and well, I guess that's also, like you said, the new, brand new characters obviously have even tougher times because we have examples in Miss Marvel, Iron Heart. Yeah, they've although, had they've had hard, you know. Although like, X twenty three took off directly. Oh yeah, from yeah. The start. As soon as she came out, she was. Um, a good, uh, she I'm trying to hit. think of any of the new like solo comics. Did you read any of the long shot stuff? I didn't read any of that. That stuff, I actually. really liked the really? beginning start of it. The art was pretty decent, but the beginning uh, writing and like story set of where what, how it was happening and what Longshot was doing 
Was it long shot or no? It wasn't no, long shot. Shatterstar. Shatterstar. I, I was gonna say. I, thought, I remember he was the one that came out. Not yeah, too long he's ago. he's got his own. I mean, long shot's got his own series too, but not as recent. Um, but the Shatterstar series is actually pretty good. Pretty short, obviously. But... Did you read the uh, last issue of Mortal Hulk? Mm-hmm. Jesus, it's getting pretty insane. I already dude. there's so much speculation going around. That's like so crazy. There's so if you follow Joe Bennett on uh, Instagram, mm. he's been posting up uh, like his uh, drawings already on there, and there's drawings of uh, there's talks about bringing back the Devil Hulk. So those issues spiked up uh, the first appearance of mm. Devil Hulk. Um, now there's issues of uh, Harpy spiking up because now they're saying I don't know if you've ever read that issue where um, do you know who Harpy is? Mm. Harpy's like this big. I've never seen the character either, but I you know I'm learning now because right. of all the speculation now because everyone's like, hey, who's this Harpy? And so basically, it's a big giant kind of radiated bird person. I don't remember Harpy. I'll show you some of the pictures. I've seen of it. some of his. She's old ones, school. But, like she came yeah. out in Hulk one sixty eight. I even I I've actually picked up one the uh, one sixty eight just, oh, just to just to see, see it. Yeah, yeah who it was. It was only like seven bucks. So I was like, Fuck, let's check it out. I want to see. And then I picked up uh, Doctor Samson first appearance oh, too. Nice. So I I want to check him out too. I think you were the one to tell me that his the one was his hair grows longer. Was it you that told me? No. Uh... I mean, Maybe that's Samson from the Bible, but... Uh... No, no, no. His his power is like the 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 longer his hair gets, the stronger uh, he gets. I don't and think then the, 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 I don't And then if that. his hair gets cut or shorter, then he's like weak and weaker. Yeah. And it, there, I guess there's radiation within his hair. Interesting. No, I don't remember. I don't think that was me. It must have been someone else. Maybe it was. I remember, maybe maybe I that was know, somebody I from a comic little... star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. Anyway, that's the great thing I totally thing about thought comics. it was you, but yeah, that's what somebody told me his power set is. And I was like, okay, this is cool too. I'll check him that out That sounds as well. interesting. I don't... Yeah, that doesn't sound familiar though. Maybe but they've retro that out They're doing some too. crazy stuff. Like, I mean, the Devil Hulk is going to be cool. I I mean, I kind of was reading more back on his history a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's an interesting That's one. pretty cool. And then I'm learning like a lot more personas of the Hulk. Yeah, like, that, and that's the thing is like a lot of people don't know all of his crazy number of personas. Yeah, there's him. I mean, I I knew about Joe Fix It. Yeah, um, but then you've got uh, uh, not Professor the, Hulk, the, or is it Professor Hulk? The Guilter or the Guilty or something they call the Guilty. guilty Hulk. You got Clud. You've got Devil Hulk. Yeah, you've Devil got, Hulk, uh, which is supposedly, I guess, they're saying the most powerful. So from let me ask I don't you, know. From it's reading like, that issue, was he was he the Devil Hulk then? He just now because that's I the guess. way that's he asked him personally. He's like, I mean, are you and he straight up told him, he's like, yeah, I am. I mean, and then, well, he, then he even told him, he's like, well, then why aren't you destroying, you know, the world? And, and he went on to going on saying, well, I am going to destroy the world. It's just, look at all you guys do and all the crap you do to the world and crap. And he's like, at least if I destroy some of most of all you guys, maybe at least a few of you guys will still be alive in the end. Uh, so, I mean, I, I mean, that was I pretty. Like, I love that issue. That issue oh, the is issue really is cool. great, but I'm. I feel like the persona in that issue is not very similar to the original Devil Hulk persona. Yeah, that's. I feel like that's. I don't know. Because the when original got... Devil Hulk persona is just like pure goddamn evil. He just. He's like not so evil that he's like oh crush kittens, but he's just very much that dark side of Hulk, mm-hmm. where it's like even worse than Clud or whatever. Skull. I can't remember Hulk. Clud. Yeah. Hulk. <laughs> Hit the Hulk's Hulk, which I thought was so funny. It's like, this is what happens when you get the Hulk sad. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> well, somebody was telling me, I guess, uh, the, uh, the one above all. What was his name? Uh, uh, the one below all? Or sorry, the one below all. Sorry. Um, I guess that was uh, the persona of uh, Devil Hulk and the Guilty Hulk fused in together. That made that, that one, that persona... Um, that's what I read from some of my, uh, some of the speculative I mean, comments. Cause it could be, I, the thing being like, is the one below all be, is like a totally new run. They I, have like some, you might have like some lore that you could like reach back, but it would all be like causatory and none of it would specifically mention, you know what I mean? The one below all. Yeah, no, that, no, I was just saying that's cause that was the guy's name was, uh, he gave himself a name. It was, um, oh yeah. Uh, it was a weird name. Not like super weird, but like hard to remember. Yeah, because I can't find the comment no more. <laughs> but yeah, I forgot. It was like Joe something. I can't remember. 
I'll have to go back to those issues again. Yeah. Um, you know, after reading so many other things, just uh, <laughs> forget me, and I've retain been, information. I've been trying to run through, and then I've been having to catch up on my manga too, which is always a pain because everything. So, like the new stuff from Super's coming out, and the manga is finally passing up where they were in the anime. Mm. So that's interesting. They got like a new villain called uh, Planet Eater Moro. Hmm. And yeah, he's... I heard they're gonna come back with the show. Oh yeah, they're definitely coming back. We all we all knew they were gonna come yeah. back. Though. Dragon I mean, Ball it's... will die when the creator yeah. dies. It just ends up. It, I mean, it was you know as sad as that it used to be my favorite favorite show, but then I it kind of it kind of ended up in the back. I I really bit. like Dragon Ball Z, but. It's a nostalgia piece. Yeah, that's it, a, like and the thing watch is, it again you, now, and you're like, mm-hmm. and and here's the fucked up thing: people won't like that I say this at all. And this is purely from a story and cinematic point of view. Kai is better than the original Dragon yeah, Ball and because you know, they cuts a lot of those intro does, fillers out. I, it cuts a lot of the outro fillers out. And I know out. a lot of people hate on that because they're like, no, you leave it alone. <laughs> and, well, it's not just that. They did change a decent amount of voice actors. That was, some, that was too. Uh, some people die. Yeah, I mean, people I forget that they made I that. I think he didn't he died too the original. Uh, <laughs> it might have been the, it's the original voice of Frieza. I know both. They used <laughs> know, a different Goten. It, oh, and it yeah, is I drastically can't... different. Is it? It is drastic. Like to go back I, I and listen. I would. I would love to see if there's like a comparison video at some point mm. to see if there's like all right, old Kai to new Kai, because while they got classics like uh, Tom Kenny, no, it wasn't Tom Kenny. I think it was somebody else. And Chris, but you know, classics like Chris Sabat to come back and do the voices they had done. They obviously Sean. were. Yep. Sean, uh, I can't say his last name. I can never say his last name. <laughs> I don't even try anymore. But the point being that they can get some of those guys back, but not everybody. And even people like then, they might have have a slightly different fixture to, after mm-hmm. 20 years doing that voice. It's probably going to sound a little bit different. But like I said, when you speak from a purely like standpoint of that and you cut down it to Kai, it's really not a bad show. Super... Yeah, up and down but i mean it's no I just no the better animation was very terrible at the very the, beginning it yeah. kind of got good at the end i won't i won't lie about that it, it was okay it was never spectacular i mean they never i took mean any I, can, I can compare it to like i mean go look at hero academia like the last freaking fight scene with yeah the, to be with fair it. those are all and even in the manga comparisons of hero academia to dragon ball z the level of illustration is just not the same yeah like the style obviously it isn't like that different or anything it's it just the level very, of illustrations i don't know the when dragon ball z look very more i don't know ruggish kind of look but that one looks it's more clean it looks clean. sterile it looks, yeah it looks very clean like just too clean for me too cl- it definitely and that's it's one thing i liked and didn't because like you said it's so clean now that i don't feel like it's that rustic tr- like change that they had where they were basically taking the manga and turning it into a video form Mm. which is basically what the original animators for dragon ball did because they were the manga people and which is why dragon ball took forever to make etc but the point being that rustic charm followed it and it actually gave it something whereas even though they updated the style right i don't feel like they added anything with it it didn't add any new kind of effect or anything there wasn't anything cool to like visually to like stimulate you and you lost the rustic charm that you've been used to and then the other thing that really made me mad was like i hate that they use the same background every every episode like really it's just such lazy lazy. it's such lazy like i know you guys have a schedule but like and that's There's, the other look, thing you I gotta watch remember. all these other shows. And yeah, like, but they... remember, every one of those got their own animation team. They're yeah. not doing the number, with the exception of some like Black Clover, who have been long listed into these. I've, I start, I'm starting to get into that's that one. You know decent. what I just started, actually, that I'm loving? Um, uh, I, I'm Shoot. reading current. No, I'm reading current. You, did, you finally like, checked yes, it out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I love slime Jesse, dude. <laughs> Bro, Bro, oh. What are we going to do? <laughs> I'm going to spit it out of my body. <laughs> like, okay. No, it's great, too, because it's such, in in much a way, the, like, that a lot of the isekais are now, with the example of Overlord, 
it is not a struggle I like, for I like, power conflict. I like uh, I like this way better than Overlord because Overlord was like too RPG ish for me. Like yeah, it was going it was into so RPG ish much, realm, it, but like, that was also its setting. Uh, like and I don't like and, the, I didn't like the Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, see, kind and, of and that, for me that was some of it that I like because I do do RPGs and play Dungeons and Dragons. So for me that's I like just, oh um, yeah I love editing character I personalities. I don't think I just was ready to watch that. Maybe it's it. I will say that the thing about it is it's similar to One Punch Man in a way that there is no level of threat to the main characters. Mm-hmm. Realistically, all of their problems can be solved with little to no effort. You know, if we think about it seriously, they're, they're basically playing a game with the world. And they are, you know, that is the thing. They are playing a game, right? He is Overlord. He is playing a game. But like you said, it's very much that Mary Sue kind of shit where it's like, yeah, there's no real challenge here this mm. is more about the story on the way to the challenge or the in the case of one punch man like the principles and ideas and jokes behind being this mary Sue. Mm. whereas in slime does you still do have threats yeah granted it's mi- minimal amounts here they, and there. they yeah they kind of make him a, a, a little overpowered but I, yes. I like it though the way they kind of make it the way he gets to there, is, right? Is it's not pretty... like he just starts as a beach. Yeah, and I don't like those kind of shows. Where yeah, just where they just them, like... so strong. And it, honestly, it's funny because we say that, but then most shonen shows are super guilty of just randomly saying, "All right, he's stronger now. <laughs> Go!" <laughs> like literally, they're like, "All right, his anger has fueled him. He ripped off his shirt. Yeah. Anime logic dictates his power has tripled." It was just cool because, like, you know, he. The, that he like absorbed all the monsters, right? And and, they... and even the thing with Veldor's where it was not so much of a like, all right, I and that's what I like about his way of doing things with and that anime manga is it's not always about all right, we have the more powerful force or this. It's about all right, what can how do we talk intact and you know figure out our world and our mm-hmm. way through this. Because like the one with Eldora is the one, or the dragon makes me laugh the most. Because it's just yeah, like, he's, he just they make him to be this all powerful, but then he's kind of like this lonely, dulse, like, yeah, kind of like, yeah, yeah. It's very and it's cool because they in the I can't remember what other one was. Oh well, we, I was we were talking about Captain Marvel about that that there were no there's no side characters in that show. Oh Michael, I would like to submit a request for dinner for two, please. You bring the dinner. And then yes, <laughs> for us. I mean, it was like, but it was a good show. I'm, I think I'm like on episode ten now. So he, s- he, he, I finally. Oh, he, you just got to like right around the end of the first season. Then, yeah. Right? Well, no, no, there's still like a good oh, thirteen they, episodes. All right, yeah, they, like a they cut it. Episode. Yeah, they cut it into. But two I pieces. heard they just went. They're getting their they're season gonna, two now. I call it season two, but it was their second releasing part uh, of season one because you had to wait six months for them to get oh, the next. Oh, that's probably... I might, I might have caught it then, right? Yeah, and so I... you've probably caught it just at the end now because there's like 23, 24 episodes in total in the yeah. first run, which is cool. And the messed up part now here, and the only good part being that they have other source material, is that they caught up to the manga 100%. They're basically caught up chapter for chapter with the manga. Um, This will probably be a show that will be one that just kind of goes with the... This is it's like, you know... I to actually, tell you the truth, I feel like it's not going to be going long. It doesn't feel like a show that well, can go long. I feel the like thing they kind of have is, a plan and then they're going to end it. I'm not sure how they're going to do it with this one because in very much the same way that Overlord is made, it's not based on the manga. It's based on a book. Oh, the... Okay, so yeah, Overlord is actually... and Overlord oh, are both okay. based on actual books. Book novels, uh, okay. Yeah, light fiction novels, which... I really should sit down and read some time. I've had it recommended to me on several occasions. Hmm. One, to get ahead of the story, because there's we're like in book one of Overlord of like five or six books. Hmm. So there's like, no, we've gotten nowhere, basically, in the story. Much in the same way that One Piece is barely three quarters of the way fucking hmm. through. Oh my gosh, One Piece. Uh, that to be fair, still has nothing on Case Close. How many uh, volumes are they on now? They're oh, like, volumes? Uh, eight? It actually eight. doesn't even have as many as Naruto yet, volume-wise. Oh, the really? anime has more. There, and anime there's... is like, what, 900 episodes mm-hmm. or something? But it's because they've been on longer, had more filler and more crossovers. They've been since the 90s, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they've, been about, they've been around for a minute. They've, they now... Uh, my other friend too. told me there was another Japanese show that's been way longer than that since the 60s or 60s. Oh yeah, um, but those are like ki- slight. Yeah, he said life. it was like a little kids show, but he said it's like yeah, he's like this is the oldest running kids. Yeah, show, much in the show. same way that go uh, whatever Gyo 13 is the longest running and shave your beard. No, you shave my beard. Ooh, 
Yeah, All right, don't shave my beard, Michael. You filthy bitch. But uh, in much the same way, Gio 13 is the longest running manga serialization, but it's a short run, Mm -hmm. usually four skit sheds, four panel skit. And yes, it's been running since 1960 or 1970 and has 1,300 runs, but it's much less overall content than some of the other ones. For example, Hajime no Ippo, which is at 1,100 chapters. And has full 23 run chapters, basically each one. Hmm. And then obviously you got like case closed is like eight or 900. Actually, Mob, how much is thousand. Mob uh, Psycho going for? Oh, psh, my friend was telling like, me about that one too. I was it's only start, like 200. Uh, I was going to start. Re- uh, it's pretty good. I, well. I actually streamed that yesterday in the background of my music thing. I usually stream anime mm-hmm. in the back and I did Mob Psycho. I've been trying to day. catch up on anime because I've been slacking on Dude, it. Dude, it's tough. One, there's a lot of new shit coming out and it's getting subbed and, then, and dubbed real quick. And then, Yeah, that's the one thing that's been kind of letting me catch up. Did you up check out us. Baki? Please um, tell me you checked out checked Baki. Oh, you yet. got it. One, it's on Netflix too. The first half of the first season's in Sounds English. Sounds familiar. It is awesome. Baki was a, is an originally an anime from the 90s and manga from the 90s. Or 80s even, probably. Oh. And it's got like a six or seven manga different serial run with two, one to 200 chapters each run. So it's a really long-standing and love story in Japan. I'm not sure how popular hmm. it is on the crossover. Yeah. But they are running one like two or three back. And it's... One, it's... Here, I actually got to pull it up for this one. I'm going to show the, the, the crowd violence. <laughs> I, uh, I was going to watch uh, Kill la Kill because it's uh, dubbed now on Netflix. Oh, yeah. That would be I've, been, I've been wanting to watch it, but I've just been too lazy <laughs> to read the subtitles. <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, I'll come back to it when they finally, finally uh, dub it, and it's finally uh, dubbed now. So this one's pretty good. And then it uh, looks like the uh, the merger has finally been yeah, official. Yeah, I, I had that on even for, a topic uh, list because that was. So what do you? So what's the what's the first thing you want to happen? Or what, X dot mutants, no question. It's worked in the past, even when Sony's fucked it up. I have no doubts Marvel could I, I really want my beautiful. Fantastic Four. I do, but I don't think the world's ready after that last travesty. Oh, oh, they are oh, not they... ready. You know, <laughs> you know what I'd like to see even before a Fantastic Four movie is a Doom movie leading yeah, into a Fantastic Four movie. That'd be cool. Movie. I would see a Doom I, movie. I know people would hate it because it would be Doom first, but I feel like it would be a really cool thing to have Doom appear in the Marvel Universe out of nowhere and then retroactively go into the, like the Fantastic Four are here to stop mm. him and they do exist, existed at the same time as him. Yeah, I'm curious how they're going to kind of... Or the and... dimensional cross shift. Yeah. That would be I'd awesome. Do that. Because one, then... You, well, I, they can't keep the contractual stuff. I don't think they have any licensure to the actual original stories, just to the current properties. Yeah. Which is a tough concept for some people to understand. But it mean, But in the meaning that they own the idea of these characters, not the physical product that was originally made by Fox and thus those characters and specific depictions of them in that universe. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I don't oh, know though. Oh, uh, I was going to ask, did you read, uh, uh, the last issue of Avengers No Surrender? Yes. Did you like Conan? I did like, Conan. finally, like, uh, finally uh, officially, Conan in the universe. Uh, yeah, officially uh, in the Marvel universe. I was going to say, have you gotten past, or I've, re- I've really been on... enjoying uh, Conan now because I picked up anything Conan. Now, oh, he's got really good I... stuff even in the past. Oh, Conan's and then plus I picked well. it up because Jason The funny Aaron's part is Conan's writing. written like a D and D adventure. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of I like it, but then... but but not in the role. But then the sense. way they it's the way he like is though, he's just so like manly as fuck. Yeah, that's what it is. But then like the way he just says things, you're just like. Oh, his sayings are great, <laughs> dude. He's one of those guys who says shit, and you want to be like. Damn, I want to be that guy. Want, not just that, like, like that. I want to be that so bad, guy so bad. I'm going to go say that later somewhere. I, I have to. I can't help myself. Like, yeah, it's, he's, it's, it's he's shit like cool. that. I like it. Plus, I, like I said, Jason Aaron, who does all the Thor stuff and who's doing that, the big War of the Realms yeah, event well, now. I mean, I, I love his writing now. So I, oh, okay, yeah. I, I and there's just people like that who do really good writing, um, you know, that you just hook on. And honestly, those kinds of books with the well written. So Soul did that one best for me in uh, either Soul or God damn it, who was the other one? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but the ones who did Darth Vader, everything Vader said. Yeah, was, uh, Charles Soul, you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, yeah, he did the second run, and then I think the first. Damn, I can't remember who did. The I, first it's one. another S name, dude. I swear. Yeah, I can't remember. Jules but and... did you see that they came out with another one? 
Darth uh, Vader. Yeah, the new, yeah. He's, nah, he's riding a horse. Who doesn't want to see Darth Vader? Darth Vader, on, <laughs> Vader on horse. There's a couple good ones. They also have Vader, like, Lost Memories or something where he's... Yeah, I've heard doing... that one. I, I never really get to pick up the Star Wars stuff just because it's like... It's a whole, a whole yeah. another universe to get into. It like, is, yeah, I'm not, and trust I'm, me, I don't it is so. Right now, bro. It is in such a fucked up state. I try to get into since it since the reset. I tried. It's with it's old in, Republic, and it, uh, it's in, it's basically impossible at this point. You might as well just wait two or three years for the next Star Wars movie to come out, finish its canon settling, and let the books be written. Because right now, Star Wars canon is effed up the A. With they, the amount. They, they they say they want to do. Um, Old Republic. I would love to see it. They I've also been, got there's that, speculation going around that, that they, they want to do it that on the TV Disney series. Plus. Yeah, well, they have that TV series the already. Yeah. yeah, that sounds and like then, a good one. And then we have the Lord of the Rings series coming. I mean, there's an unlimited... That's on number. Amazon, right? I know, but yeah. But, but still, yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. And then, uh, but I mean, can... any number of different things are coming out on every platform. We also know that Netflix is going to be doubling down on original superhero titles since Umbrella Academy has been doing so well. Yeah, that's... Uh, I kind of felt that... Yeah, you can already tell because... Because they now they They've just auctioned off. Stuff, did you yeah. see that they're auctioning off their uh, their props now? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's when you know it's official. Shit's done. It's over with. Marvel ain't coming back to that. <laughs> they sell them the props already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We do. They work. What's the what's the whole idea of Disney U and the Disney uh, the Infinity Gauntlet? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Disney Plus. Uh, as soon as that idea came out, we knew Mar- that Disney was not going to I just on hope it's at a reasonable price. And I, I hope that, you know what, I really feel like Di- <laughs> Disney will go low ball because they know that so many people will flock they to it. They make so much money already, too, that this could easily and be And they've already that- said, they've already said they're going to have every... Disney, Disney movie, movie they've ever done on their their thing. yeah which you already know everyone's gonna be on like you there. cannot you cannot not I don't care who you are out there unless you are the worst heartless soulless cultureless bastard in the world there is a Disney movie out there you like whether you know it or not they made that <laughs> shit I guarantee fucking see it I I cannot stress that enough any language because that's the other thing is Disney is not a American thing in much of the way. That Netflix is not an American thing. This is a worldwide thing that Disney has been spreading for the last 60 years, 70 years. They are everywhere in every country, in every language, mm-hmm. and they are they are they were never going to give up their titles. You know what I mean? They were always going... They make their own shit. They make their own shit, buy the shit that makes their shit, and make that shit. Yeah. That's, that's how Disney works. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a smart idea for them to just go their own streaming service, because, I mean, might as well. It is smart, but... There is going to have to be a point where it hits a wall. Yeah. Because we're already... And don't get me wrong. That was the same with cable television, right? You can only afford to purchase Well, that's what I think but... everything's going to go, though. It's like, I think cable will die here oh, in cable, the next... I'm, what, what I'm do you say surprised. I, what do you say? Eight years? Nah, say it'll stay... In, it'll take another 10 to 15 years, probably. I say to kill 10. Cable. 10. I, I got to give it longer just because... Think of how long it took for VCRs to die. That, uh, yeah. CDs... Even, CDs are done, yeah, for and, sure. And think about even the fact Blu-rays that records, are done in, uh, yeah, like, and uh, yeah. and and that <clears throat> took the better part of the two thousands because by two thousand we had digital storage in a p- capacity where you could store movies at home. Yeah. Uh, now we have. Now, it wasn't the storage. best, yeah, but and it by two thousand ten, there was no. There was it was so easy that 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 half the time now you have trouble finding things in physical format. I I just watched a rant on a magic. It was funny because it was about Magic the Card Gathering, but it was a rant about Dungeons and Dragons. It's because there was a guy doing a video on Magic, and he was comparing. He's like, I can't believe Dungeons and Dragons released their newest edition, and you have half of your materials are PDF form. You have to get them offline. Oh. Do not come in the book. And Dungeons and Dragons has been typically and historically a form. Yep, paper. It's it's such a thing. It's just a feeling thing. And I mean, it's the same for these little fuckers, the cards, that the tactile feel sometimes for people just makes the game better than... Oh, yeah. That, yeah everyone likes to actually hold something in their hand instead of, like, knowing that your shit's kind of... Randomly like, generated, like, yes. Yeah, uh, and it's held by the company. <laughs> so, like, if they wanted to, they could shut that shit. Right, or if the <laughs> or if production stuff. And that was the thing. is like, what happens when someone buys you... Or, you know, you're... Yeah, at least, at least my cards are my cards still. Yeah, at least I'm responsible for their well-being and yeah. can take care of them. 
Same for the books, the D&D books. I've had, granted, they're not as good in condition as I got them, but I've had them for 10 plus years and they still are able to read. I haven't lost them because they're books mm-hmm. and I haven't fucked them up enough to the point I can't use them. Whereas the computer I had 10 years ago and even sometimes the data files, if I've had a corruption or a, or a crash or two, yeah, uh, I've lost some stuff. You know, what, and not specifically D&D stuff or anything, but just in general, whether it be a script, a file, a, a program, mm-hmm. whatever. It just, uh, you know, the cloud is only as safe as you your maintenance on your computer yeah. and your backup right. driving or, or yeah. backing up. I mean, yeah, we'll see. I mean, everyone's flocking to the to the streaming service. I mean, there's got Disney now. Oh, I DC, mean, let's and see. And like I said, that's the problem. Though. When do when do we hit the wall? That we hit with the cable channels where it's like it's enough is enough. How many can you afford? What is the realistic well, number I, of streaming I feel like services? the I don't know. We'll see because, the, I mean, you know, there's always certain people who flock to certain things. You know, uh, yeah, like, certain. They'll be like, I, you know, I really just enjoy Netflix stuff. I'll mm-hmm. stay with Netflix. Or, hey, I really like what Amazon's got. So yeah. I'm going to just stay with them. Or And it, the tough part for me is these companies are such massively producing very producing such massive variations of these products. Like, you, there, there is no, like, line of, like, all right, we make horror movies. No, we make everything. Yeah. You and, know what also is? Everyone's making their own content now. Mm-hmm. Sci-fi now. Oh. Sci-fi never really made their own content. They yeah, only they, did... Uh, uh, I mean, they made their own movies. Movies, but they, like, they never to, went to, they, like... Actually, I feel like they were one of the shows that did a lot more of their own content. And then, like... Yeah, I mean, they did make those B... And I used it was, to watch a lot of the B yeah, movies. Yeah, they were very <laughs> B-oriented. Perfect. And you could tell that the production value in sci-fi was mid-grade. Like, they were not a big company. No, and I... You know, I like that they kind of moved away from the B movie company that they were yeah, in. Yeah, and have upgraded to sci-fi, whoever bought them out and renamed them. Sci-fi Wire think is that they call themselves now right right yeah or some some oh, yeah some stuff but uh i mean i wanted to check out their new show which was based on a comic uh deadly class which Ooh, i i never checked out good. dude there's so many comic like it's blown up and i love it because and that's it's cool i really forget. do like that a lot of these things are getting optioned there's a lot more things like oh tons. right now there's another show called huck i don't know if you mm-hmm. ever heard of huck huck's like this superhero who's kind of like Forrest Gump. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. He's very humble and bumble kind of superhero. And it, it's pretty cool. I kind of read a little bit of the first issue. Mark Miller uh, wrote the issue. So oh, remember, okay. Miller's got a, a yeah, deal with whole, Netflix now. Yeah, so. Which that's going to be interesting. I will wonder, granted, that's the, that'll be the whole thing, right? Then you go to Netflix for the Millerverse if you're a Miller fan. And that's the whole point. Yeah, like you're, you're going to have your like your, your certain, you no know, Right, but then what do you do for people like us who are so multi- pushed uh, it's, out it's a lot it's like a lot. i already have enough trouble with netflix and hulu and this or that and then to add on to that dcu and yeah i, I pay for that and i don't even watch the show <laughs> right and their comic selection is is it's, laughable it's really laughable like i just pay for comicology now yeah, comicology it's is cheaper anyways and i get well, more with oh yeah it. their their selection the, they have I would always cooler titles oh, from yeah. dc yeah the as far as dc's comicsology is the way to go and then uh, I don't understand depends. why they did that because it makes no sense that that because they didn't they didn't have that deal with them because it, that was just recent that they yeah. they had the deal with DC to start Comics. putting more content. But on I think their, Comicsology might be covering the portion of the scanning and uploading as part of that, and then yeah. maybe even server. I just th- I just th- thought they would have put more effort into their DC app with their comics instead of just like well, hey we're just gonna put our. I gotta wonder there. how well Marvel Unlimited is going. I don't know the numbers on Marvel Unlimited. I would, I'd love to keep it, but it's just, it's, I think it's too much. I would love if it was it's just comicsology so, price. Right. $5, I think is a reasonable price, but $9, that's four. I know $4. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. But that adds up, you know, like, dude, even with the deal, which I got a deal for like 80 bucks a year for Marvel. That's still, and then that's the thing. Like, do you use it a whole lot? I, and I did actually, I used it a shit ton. I had to at but, one point when I first started, cause I was catching up, but right. then I've, I've used it far less, less because I have so much present content to catch up right. with. Right. Well, and that's the other thing, though, is you're a physical collector, too. So yeah. you like having... And, and that's the other one. The tactile comic, the physical copy. Whereas some people are moving... Purge. Yeah, whereas <laughs> me, I was just fine running through chapter after chapter of old digital content and catching up. Yeah, there's some stuff I want to read. And even now, I guarantee you, even if it's been a year since I had it and I had it for a year... Even if I was still using it, and that that was the other reason I stopped is they needed to get their formatting better because the images were taking so long to load 
that I couldn't read it in half the places I was going. Mm. The, the, and the problem That's, being that... Did you ever download it first before you left? I did try to do those too, but, but the realistic part being, if you're on a mobile device, you are going to be on the go. Yeah. And no matter the number of I downloaded, which you could only download a certain number yeah, too. Yeah, it, it was only like, like 25. 25? Okay. Yep. It wasn't that um, much, yeah. Yeah, which for me and you, that's not a good... After, that's that's less than a bus or a plane ride of real sitting down reading comics, whereas sometimes you need the ability to like just sit there and read comics for a couple hours yeah. when you're not I, doing something. I at one point wanted to buy a tablet. <laughs> just yeah. so that I could read the, the, them I much know. better on my... Right, on like, I liked screen. it on my phone, but I was just like, it is oh so and my I ended gosh. Up having to do, and that was the only great thing about the Marvel scans and comics as compared to wherever else you could watch them or read them like Comixology besides Marvel Unlimited was the fact that they had screen pressed them as well to image size so that you would panel to panel. You can yeah. do a panel view, which you know, was beautiful. When and I did it like panel that sometimes is like I feel like it cut off some parts. Sometimes it did. And I'd be like, wait a minute, but you what's did going have, on here? But you did have the option to switch back to a yeah, full panel yeah. page or a thing and then resume your thing. If the loading wasn't such an issue, I would have loved it for the panel thing because it really did make reading on your phone a much better I know, better that's experience. cool. I do like that. That like, Because when you swipe, you just see like the kind of the motion go mm -hmm. through a little bit instead of you just kind of like... Mm, yeah, it feels through. much more like... It's okay. more fluid, kind of. Yeah. Well, and also like going panel to panel. I feel much more like I'm reading it yeah. and moving along with it as opposed to, all right, and zoom in here. Okay, that's what he fucking said. <laughs> and zoom in here, and that's what he fucking said. Okay, yeah, which don't get me wrong, I do and I get I deal with that shit uh, if I have to, but their use of that was probably the best feature of that besides the fact that they have so much on Marvel U. Like, just so much good stuff. And they never take anything off. Yeah. They only add. And that was another thing. Like, why the hell would you take the books that you've already added onto right, your, DC, your DC yeah. app? And it made then, no sense. I mean, and then switch right, it out with storage, storage make servers. Any sense? The only th reason I could think of was server storage space. But realistically, how much space do you need for that compared to a movie, right? I feel like all of Batman ever written could be fit into the length of a Lord of the Rings film space area. And I'm maybe my compression's off slightly, or I'm underestimating the number of Batman films, but that's just my understanding of how image compression in film works as compared to film compression. Mm -hmm. You know, the size files are just different. You get a 100K picture file, and you get a 100 gigabyte video file. And the video files may be 10, 20 minutes long, depending on the quality, if even... And the picture could be high def at 100K or 200 yeah. or even two megabytes. Yeah. But even, like I said, it's just such a comparison where I'm like, what are you guys doing? You are you are a multi-million dollar company with a yeah. revenue source would... in front of you, which that was another one of that video they talked about. Like, when are the cross company? When are we getting another DC and Marvel? When are they going to learn they'll make more money working together than competing? Like, don't get me wrong, that's part of com competition, too, is sometimes coming together and working. Yeah, because that's what Intel and AMD do. They're always doing competition. One comes out with something better, like, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> I see what you're saying here. Let me do this. <laughs> and, and so, like, the one, the example of the one I'm, they said was, uh, now that Wizards of the Coast owns Magic the Gathering oh, and Dungeons & Dragons. Oh, I about that now. Yeah, they purchased them a while ago now. They've had them both for a few years. It's been since like 2015, probably, hmm. uh, maybe a little later, but I think it was about 2015 or it actually probably early. And because they have purchased it, they, uh, they officially had announced and they, when people had questioned that Magic the Gathering cards hadn't been fantasy themed in the last several years of sets hmm. because they felt that that was more D&D's area of reference. Expertise. Right. Which... Don't get me wrong. Yes, I understand the sentiment, but the person making the video made the exact perfect point. And the person who made that video, by the way, is Talarian Tutor uh, or Community College, whatever they're on mine, <laughs> whatever. Check them out. But the point being, it was like, and, th and this is actually akin to another like much larger uh, intellectual like concept. But that why would you not just use them both? What people would go insane for a monster or a uh, Magic the Gathering themed Dungeons and Dragons block, like our section. They would just lose it if they could create their races and follow the stories 
in that and it, you would get so many people back into the dying f- mat uh D D format mm-hmm. because it really has been going downhill ever since they switched to four five was a big improvement but they had lost so many people on four i think that it didn't really matter and now we're gonna something so i heard a ding i did hear a ding and i don't know what it's from oh it was a message maybe no that was from me. no. well uh and then the other one being the cross section of a Dungeons and Dragons themed magic card block would also sell out like crazy, and that's called the Medici effect, where you take two some mostly non-relative things and cross them, and come up with something better. Mm-hmm. You know, I like, mean, they did do that. Uh, what was the line that they had for a little bit? I started a. Um, it's when uh, Marvel and DC. Actually, oh, the amalgam. Uh, yes. Was it amalgam? Yep, it's amalgam. The amalgam universe. Yep, that's what it was. Yeah, and that's when they just the, like and they fused were really, the characters. To together. be fair, though, that was the laziest goddamn. <laughs> and still, I've was always amazing. wanted to check it out. I've you always should check, wanted it, to out. check it, it out. And and that's the thing I'll say. Even though it was the goddamn laziest fusion they could possibly do, <laughs> what it was it? Was Wolverine beautiful. and uh, Batman. Batman, yeah, Wolverine. But then Batman. his enemy <laughs> is Sabretooth. And Joker, who is the hyena. <laughs> so it worked. It worked so, so fucking cool. well with no effort, dude. Zero <laughs> effort. And then you would get, like, uh, you know, certain, like, Catwoman and someone else or what. You know, it was just, even though you could tell it was so lazy and copy outy to the most basic form of how you would yeah. cross these over... It was beautiful. The only time that you ever see Marvel on DC, you uh, work together. I mean, there's other crossovers. You they got, did like, the this... Batman or the Superman and Spider-Man crossover. Yeah, they have uh, a Superman Hulk crossover. They have the Justice League versus but Avengers. But those all were like in the 80s. And they've oh, never they, done they've anything. No, they've done nothing since 96. Then, yeah, since yeah. the last one being the Spider-Man versus Hulk. Or no, Superman Remember, and Is Hulk. that the last one? Yep, that's the yeah. last one. That one or the Spider-Man, but I'm pretty sure Hulk is after. Which is so funny because people don't want to talk about either of those because in that one, uh, Hulk and Superman are basically evenly matched 100%. And it's the only time we see Superman fight a version of the Hulk that is not uh, basically the weakest version of every other Hulk, which is Hulk uh, with Banner in control. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just Hulk going all Hulk. Yep, but that's the one in 96. And the other one being in the, those people who've read the Spider-Man... Superman, Superman crossover or Superman, yep, Spider Man, Superman one, have should know that Venom uh, was basically at the point when, granted, that was because Superman didn't know all his weaknesses, but was at the point that he could easily take on Superman hmm. by like invading his orifices with the symbiote, which, like I said, not necessarily the worst. Although the writing concept there makes no use of any of Superman's powers, each of which are basically effective against the symbiote. Um. But yeah, it's it's such a funny thing to see these because they really were done at a time when comics didn't give a shit. One, they knew they were they were basically selling. Like in the '90s, you were still selling comics pretty yeah, decently until '96. <laughs> yes, yeah, right then, 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 then. So they were just giving a fuck, you know what I mean? And we and that in and that's what I will it say. all went to crap. <laughs> yeah, which is funny because it's not to say that '96 is when comics got bad. That's just when people got fed up and the new well, industry. I, also, I, it was just the speculation and all that. It was there the was guys who would come in and be like. Oh, uh, Spawn number one just came out, and I'm gonna go in there and buy 20 copies of this book, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to these because they're gonna pay for my kids' college tuition and crap, and and the, you had all these people storming the gates, basically doing all this, and that's what kind of ruined. It was comics. it was also and the internet. You, you, bubble and burst. then on top of that, I heard Marvel at that time was publishing bonkers numbers of print numbers of books oh yeah they did not sell yeah and and it's like damn bro you've made all these books and nobody bought the oh book. yeah they were basically <laughs> and you have like just yeah they're the just end. throwing them away at the end because yeah they're not, they're not worth anything they're and there's then, so many of them and none of them sold so they have zero value yeah i definitely know what you're talking about and that and it was it was a it was and then, then it got the it was the variants too that also killed it too people yeah. they were variants are still killing the industry yeah you know, and it, I, I, it sucks too. It sucks because I, I they up, can and I end up buying them. <laughs> because the thing is, cool. they're good, but there's just too damn many. One variant 
Maybe oh, yeah. two. Oh, yeah. They'll, per... do, they'll go in and they'll do, okay, hey, guys, we're going to do another number one. Let's do 10 fucking variants for this issue. Oh, hey, now uh, th uh, Detective Comics 1000 is coming out. Yep. They have literally 10 different covers i think for that because they're oh, doing easily, a 1930s yep. cover 1940s and 1950s and 1960s and some of those 1970s, I can but that's 90s, like a once a year and thing. that's not on top of including like all the store variants now that they're starting right to do. and that's what gets me even more now is the store variants because those are added on top and don't get me wrong i love the idea of employing local talent and making your own product that's even more memorable but at the weight rate they're doing it with every goddamn release we are never going to see comic sales and the ability to sustain the industry. We're already suffering through the death of the paper industry. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. just the realistic part of having technology like we do nowadays. I literally have, like, I'm chopping up paper into smaller foldable paper, not to be written on or used for storage, but to be used as storage mo markers. That's, and I can do that because I have four to five reefs of paper that are never going to be used ever again in my life you know what i mean when the fuck am i going to use a piece of paper who writes letters anymore it's it's just not the thing we're not there anymore in a society and for the people who do congrats and i do don't get me wrong there is still some stuff i keep paper wise that is important as backups but i guarantee you i also have a digital copy of it somewhere as the other backup so you know we're really not in an age where paper's in a spot where we can afford to be doing yeah. that like they've got to <sighs> maximize their profits right now yeah. and get as we'll, much quality. We'll they see can. what they'll do. I mean, I've heard from DC that, and they and it looks like they have been doing it. They're they're they, they're yeah, pulling yeah. back on a lot of their books, and they're trying and, and runs. they're trying to focus more on their book, like the ones that they have already, mm -hmm. instead of making like, more. Hey, titles. okay, now let's do a big event. Okay, now we're gonna do ten, di right. five different mini series just mm -hmm. for this event. Because it's the tie-ins for all of them. Mm -hmm. And then, or, you know, they just do all that stuff. And Marvel seems to not... What's funny is, really got it. Yeah, yeah. I, Marvel has not cut back, but their sales have not went <laughs> is what I've been hearing now. It, this is true. And, and this is the thing that always gets me, is the DC fanboys, and I will call them that because they obviously don't know how to read charts, are always shitting on Marvel comic sales. But Marvel has not, in the t past 10 years, dropped below any certain percentage worth of DC or anywhere near... They were uh, doing something. good for a little bit when Rebirth came out. Oh, yeah. They were on top. They were on bit. top, but they were nowhere near pulling away with the race or anything. Marvel still held at least mm -hmm. five to ten of the top 20 spots on comics. Mm -hmm. Now, as much as you call it dominating, is that saying that when Marvel started releasing uh, the new Secret Wars stuff and they were dominating the top 15 spots, did that mean that DC wasn't selling comics? No. It just meant Marvel had an event going on or a new reset and they were getting sales and higher sales comparatively, not in total. All the total sales were still relatively similar between both companies. You would just have certain high sellers, right? You have Superman and you'd have Avengers, the Batman. And then... Yeah. And depending on like what was the hype that we got. Exactly. Month or... And, and so for me, I'm just like, no one ever reads a chart or understands a statistic over time. It's like, no, change is over time. You have one month. All right, cool. What about next month when you're down three spots on Batman because you wrote a shitty story? Like, are you going to keep your sales up? And is that a consistent talking win? Talking about Catwoman? And the way uh, it wasn't talk, just that one. about Batman issue. Was it Batman issue 50? Yeah, the proposal. And that wasn't even a shitty issue. That was a shitty unveil no which, well, fuck, dude, that was Wall Street. Man, well, and now I know they did they announced but the that's thing. what I mean is like you know, well, they, they don't tell Wall Street damn it they can't be trusted <laughs> why is Wall Street always trusted I mean, they like, don't know what they're doing don't tell Wall Street they can't be trusted <laughs> why, why is Wall Street even know <laughs> why, why is it such a Wall Street thing god I like mean, Wall yeah. Street why you care <laughs> why I don't get that it doesn't make but yeah, sense but yeah you know that sucks that they, that, that happened but yeah. and the, the, the didn't the fucked up part is it really didn't detract from it at all it just pissed people off yeah there was people man and, they and, they and, really and, didn't like that and, that, and that it kind like, of was a lie comic... a slap to the face yeah and uh the same thing what they did with the uh, x-men and yeah, uh, a little kitty bit. pride yeah, yeah that one was such a fucked up one but i told you the story on that one right yes i told you donny cates is the one that came up with the idea so I hey know. you know what let's not. not have them marry and let's have uh which let's have gambit and i'm not gonna lie i still think that's a terrible idea because at least for the characters of kitty and colossus because they have neither of them really done shit since then they have been on the 
fucking like I mean except these... for Katie when now she was the, the leader of, right but uh, she was before too before the marriage thing yeah and that she was at the Guardians of the Galaxy for a little bit wasn't right she? but yeah but that was before the new X-Men run the yeah, new X-Men before, run and then, starts with her as yeah, the headmaster and then, she, yep, yep. and then they get to the point of being married later and my point being that not getting married doesn't change that at all mm-hmm. it doesn't like it and that even more so Colossus actually had the bigger effect of like you know, of the marriage or breakup or whatever. Yeah. But even then, story-wise, it doesn't do anything for them. They're back where they were to start with. Two people who were together and loved each other, etc., but cannot be together or stay together anymore. And so there was nothing to new to be added, even from their personal s- sections of like, all right, have they moved on to new teams, different things? No, they're both basically doing the same shit. Colossus, a little new stuff, but... What was he doing last, though? I forget. He was like messing around with uh, some other girl. X Force, or I mean, I'm sure he was oh, with a girl, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. he was, he was with X Force. Right. Which cool, but that's I, really I, not. I, that I only much. read the first issue, so yeah, I, I haven't really of, gotten that much. I think they're only either. they're already on third Four? or fourth now. Yeah, they're on fourth issue. But yeah, and it really didn't make such a difference going from the X Men to X Force. Let's be honest. Uh, with the uh, Kid Cable now. Yeah. What did you think about that whole that thing? That whole thing was interesting. I thought it was it, yeah, cool enough. I didn't enough, really care for it. I was like, man. It wasn't. This is, man. I didn't really yeah, care. I didn't care good. for the whole story. This whole story was like. Convoluted, nonsensical. Yeah, it was just like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, like, why? I think, I never really figured out why he was going back and doing that, except for that he was like, you're a pussy old. Man. Yeah, no, that's really what it was. It was it more was... of that, you, 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 you messed up. You don't know what you're doing. Pop I'm, I'm younger. Winning. I'm smarter, I'm quicker, you old old man, you done. That's you it. That's basically done. it. And that's he was. all he did. He fucking blasted him too. Which is funny because that's future him. So now where does his future go? Uh, that's all the time paradox crap that I love about those. With so, the whole yeah, I mean, it was cool, too. but I, was, I just didn't really care for that one. And then I, st- I don't it, even care it, for like the eight. I don't care for like this Age, Age of, of X-Men yeah. stuff. I mean, I'm picking them I all understand, the books, but I still I understand why it. they do it. But yeah, I honestly care more about the X Men who have been left behind. They're, Yo, I'm loving on the X Men right that's now. That's really good. Oh yeah, Cyclops in their old nineties. Oh, outfits. it's awesome. I love how she came in. She's like, "This is all we have," and then just she just pulls out their old nineties clothes. She's just like, "Really?" Yep. Like, and then I love that they have him in his uh, brown suit. I also like they have him acting a little more like nineties Cyclops did, which was not. Which the, is what they're trying to do. I think they're just I like they, they, are. they they they're trying to. Which is, co- I mean, which is cool because it, it kind of comes into the writing that he knows that he messed up, mm-hmm. that he, and that also too, that in the very end of, you know, when he died, that wasn't even really him, you know, it was Emma Frost. Right, that was, the end. although, I every- mean, it was his fault when the, I, I didn't read those stories, but I know that it was his fault who started the whole war with the, the X-Men. No, even that's not him. Oh, so what did he do? Oh, well, I did think you're talking the- about the Terrigen Mist shit. No, but that's I thought a different he started one. up the war with uh, Avengers and X-Men. Didn't he start that all up? And that's a little bit of a hot podge either side could take blame for. Hmm. I'm going to give that to... Ha- at but least I heard he be kind of came like an asshole, basically. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, he's the always big, been an that's asshole. Where but... his, he has a little bit, but that's where his character read, is tarnished. Some... And it's really more the killing Professor X thing, which is funny because no one gives... Everyone gives Jean a pass for the shit she does as the Phoenix, and no one gives Scott a pass, and I'm the same, I don't. And I think it's because of who it is. Well, Scott did some really effed up stuff in the past. I mean, I've, I've, I mean th- I've read some stuff of what he's done. Like, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Whole Emma Frost, Mad- yeah. The, no, but even that in the, the 80s with the Madeline and him oh, yeah. leaving Jean Grey because she looked like her, and, like, that's all messed up. Like, that's really weird, like... Yeah, I don't know why they always write him as such a dick in the relationship. Yeah, like, that was, like, he was a dick <laughs> through the but, whole... But even beyond that, like, his character wasn't irredeemable, and I think what it really did, it was the killing of Professor X. Like... Yeah, um, how did he die again? I don't think I remember that one. Uh, he's I don't like, think I read that part. Uh, basically what That was in is Asia like, versus... Uh, uh, ABX, Avengers versus, yeah. Okay, see, I didn't read that one. Yeah, which is a pretty good one. Um, and the whole thing, the basic concept behind that being that which is funny because that leads right into Axis from AVX, goes straight into Axis. But the basic thing was uh, they had gotten down to like two wielders of the Phoenix Force, and it was Emma Frost oh, and, and Scott, Scott. Summers. Yeah, I remember and that. And he steals, he basically beats her down and steals the rest of the Phoenix Force. And Professor X tells him, like, you need to stop. We we cannot do this. We're killing people, destroying the world. And, like, he, and he fucking... 
right? <laughs> but like I said, and I and mentally, I I like I said, I know why, I, both mentally and emotionally, I understand why. But like I said, no one gives Jean flack for the shit she does as the Phoenix. That's because she's she's a girl, man. Yeah, she. she, she but it's the I, best. I really think it's about what they do, though. In that Phoenix destroys right this whole planet of vegetables. And I feel people. like she has more of a like a like a hard background of the of the Phoenix Force always messing with her. Right. And whereas like, F- Scott was doing. He did somewhat, it on his own whim. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to fuck shit up before yeah. he got the Phoenix Force, and we and I think that really was intentions. But also, like I said, just Professor X, man. I yeah. heard Professor X was a, was a dick also through the comics. Yeah, as well. no, he is absolutely not a good guy. He is not a good person. He, he says some f up stuff I've heard. Before. In the, a lot of the early stuff is real f up, and even some of the later stuff that they do post retcon stuff is it's all fucked up. Like the stuff with uh, Gabriel Summers, uh, what's his fucking superhero name? Vulcan. Stuff with Vulcan oh. is all bad. Just the whole thing. Because basically, remember when the first X-Men get beat by Krakatoa and they have to recruit the second team of X-Men with Wolverine and Storm and Colossus? Yeah, that's when they do the giant size X-Men. Right? Yes. And they came up with so that. basically, they that's retconned. That's when Chris Claremore came yep. into the and, game. And Oh, yeah, and he changed it. Yeah, he up. changed it up for X-Men. Yeah, he did. He, he brought it into a new era. But uh, what I was saying is they basically retconned a story into that timeline where they are not the first people Professor X picks to go save everyone from Krakatoa. Instead, he recruits another team consisting of Vulcan and like two or three other people to go out and try to save them. But on the way, Vulcan like basically fringes out, kills everybody and prof- or like, I don't know if he actually kills everybody or everybody just dies. I can't remember, but I feel like he kills some people or everybody dies. And Professor X just basically leaves him stranded out there and never <laughs> tells anybody. <laughs> that was it. It's yep, over. Even though he knows it's Scott's brother. No. Oh. Yeah, so it's one of those things, and then later the comic comes back, and Vulcan has the powers of craziness, whatever, and there's that whole shit. But it's like it was one of those things where it's always some shit Professor X does that comes back to bite them in the ass, like every single time, and I can never understand why. Like it's he's psychic, right? <laughs> like no, he's not. He's telepathic. <laughs> but the point being, like they write these characters in those foibles, right? They're written this way very purposefully, and there are no perfect characters. Any pick any comic character, they have a very fucked up part of their history somewhere mm-hmm. with maybe the exception of people like captain america and yeah, he was always a goody too yeah shoes. that's just his mo like there are no bad cap stories unless except he's being the, mind except controlled. now they just did the hydra cap which seemed to, to be tar- tarnished his tarnished his right uh, that tarnishes his rep but we all know that's not cap so it's yeah no you know it's you know what's funny is i, I find that people really latch on to those things though you know like like pe- people from you know will remember this 10 20, 20 years, years. oh yeah be like evil oh, cap would be a I, thing. yeah i don't i don't like captain america no more because he did this and he did that and and, and i can definitely oh, he, say that too because like, the like same i said thing, the like, one nobody mis- likes uh, P- uh, da- uh pim was the original ant-man nobody likes him because of that one fatal Time, mistake yep. he did when he slapped <laughs> it's funny because no one gives shit to fucking reed richards and he hits uh, I've, heard, I've, heard, I've heard he did. I I've heard he did. I think. I mean, maybe I haven't read those ones and don't remember right, but I swear he hits her or at least misogynizes on her in a similar way several times where he's just like, get back and cook my breakfast. <laughs> like, legit. It's like, it's cool to ignore your and to, like basically berate your wife, but you know, God forbid, you know, you. No, but it, it's one of those things that it does. One bad action in a character's history defines them for the rest of their thing. And with exceptions, obviously, but yeah, it's, it's really is like a fucking stigma, which is also why I think they even choose to go with the new Ant-Man in the movie as opposed to the original. Yeah, Ant-Man. I think that's why, I mean, and he's more likable of a character anyways, I honestly I think. feel like he is. Even although, in the comics, I like him. Although he was a little less likable in the And even now, like in the Secret comics, War, like the uh, Pim, Empire. now he just even, he's even worse off now because now he's like fused half with, with ant man uh, yeah. or yeah, ultron yeah and, and that, that's messed up yeah even though i uh, yeah they like could, that they could just of... not fix the character no more they just kind of they kind of just kept going down the rabbit hole yeah just they were just like just making more more, more up, worse which is so fucked too because then you have the wasp who's left in this void of like i'm the wasp i'm an ant-man character but never, there's no real ant-man anymore so i'm just the wasp and i'm on the avengers now 
Yeah, I know. It's just one of those things. Uh, I think we're pretty did well, a pretty decent yeah. set. And I, mean, I know you got to catch a movie. Yeah, at yeah. Nine. I was gonna ask you one last thing, actually. Though, sure, sure. so what about Venom? Did you read Venom? 12? The new, oh no, I haven't read the new Venom. Ooh, I gotta catch it. You're gonna like that one. There's so many. That one's good. One. And then I'm actually excited to read Spider Man Life Story. Have you heard about that one? I haven't heard that one. That no. one's about um, Spider Man if he kind of grew up in our timeline instead of the Marvel timeline. So oh, okay. they started off in the 60s and he's like a teenager. So he goes from the 60s and then next month they'll have the 70s and then the 80s and then I think they'll finish it off with the 90s. That'd be so he cool. kind of just grows older with the times. And like, so right now he's kind of doing the Vietnam War and stuff is going on. And, right. So, uh, he's so they're kind of, yeah, and... yeah, they're kind of going with the times of everything. That'd be interesting. I, so I think that'd that... be cool. I did catch up on the uh, new, just the main Spider Man run with Craven. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Did you, did, uh, did you finally read the issue where he, uh, where he sends his sons out? Yeah, that one was pretty good. Oh, I like love that, that I, issue. Uh, that my favorite issue part is though, my favorite. My favorite part though is all the different beards of the Cravens. That's They cool. just have so like many that. different hairs I just, I just love that the part though, he comes in and then he just like. Also his son looks like a badass. Yeah, He's yeah, like yeah. huge with the tattoos and she's like, what are we doing, father? Oh my gosh, my favorite part is just like I said, yeah, he comes in. With the he's all excited. He's yeah. like, my sons are all coming back. My sons are coming like, back. like, damn you. And then he, and then he just is like, where's everybody? And there's just this one guy. And he's like, well, I killed them all. Cause Fucking you know, you, have, yeah. you told us to go out and become our best. So I said, the only way for me to become my best was to kill all my brothers. <laughs> I thought that was like, whoa, yeah, was are you funny. serious? Like he, he just like had a, his way to prove his point to show his dad that he was the best was just to kill all his brothers. I was like, okay, that yeah, that's pretty badass. That's then, pretty badass. <laughs> that's pretty badass. That's pretty evil. Jesus and then his, da his dad's like, he, I, it kind of seemed like he was pissed, but mm -hmm. then he goes into just like, he's like, oh, you're I the best. Can't ever. You're amazing. I, yeah, I, I really love the way that this is this kind of Craven story is gonna I, go. The thing is, I, what I like about it is the writing Craven. Well, he's writing quotably yeah. in his. Uh, element in his character like the shit he says is awesome it's, it's at first great. when i was reading the first couple issues of it it was kind of, i didn't really wasn't liking amazing spider-man for a little bit but now that we finally got, got into, into this stuff, craven yeah. arc story because it really was all leading up to this craven arc like yeah and the, and the, the first one beginning. was kind of just more of setting up things like how they were again like him i did like that he kind of bring back uh mary jane and that i always together. love it but if they split them up again i'm gonna fucking throw i don't know i'm gonna throw a building at somebody some shit i don't because i'm just done with it they did the whole uh whatever his one uh where the the one with the deal with mephisto what? oh the the big time was that it or was it my my uh it was right before after big time or before big time yeah, it was something. um I can never remember the last the name. day. Was yeah, it? or the last vow or some shit. I thought it was last day. It might be the last day. It might be Spider Man the last day. And so he lost both of his wife and his daughter for his old dying aunt. And I'm just like, they're and they're gonna kill her off again. They anyways. got. They have to. Did you? Did you, have you been reading Friendly Neighborhood Spider Man? No, I have never. So supposedly she's got something going on. She's uh she's sick. Oh man! So and I, I think they just were supposed to reveal it this week. So I haven't, I haven't read it yet, but I gotta go in and yeah, I gotta catch up. See. The problem being with Spider Man and his side story. I side know, I hate so that. Much There's shit. so many like I hate, and I then like they it. always come up. Oh, hey guys, we're gonna do another Spider Man side spinoff. I'm like, oh my gosh! So we got Amazing Spider Man, then we got uh, Friendly Neighborhood Spider Man, and then I think they just ended that uh, the spectacular Peter Parker Spider Man. Yeah, they one did, where they revealed that he revealed himself to Jonah that he mm. was Peter Parker. Yeah, well, that was that kind was... of like the only key issue in that whole I thing. Mean, there's probably and then his, one him his knowing his sister. Yeah, that I didn't really care for Although that story that as well either. Yeah. Well, it was an interesting one because it wasn't his sister. And like I said, the the beginning of Amazing Spider Man wasn't too interested as well. But um, yeah, I'm excited though to see where this is gonna go and. Uh, See how uh, he ends it off, and how he's just collecting all the yeah all the guys. What the one last thing I gotta tell you though too is uh, have you been have you checked out the book called Honor and Curse yet? Mm, 
Yeah, I think you told me to check it out. I think I did. Yeah, yeah I did. That's check another. It out. Did oh, they just did? come out with the second? Second one? issue just yeah. came out this week. I just as finished well. the first one. Where and they're then, like, oh, he must die. Guardians of the Galaxy. Have you been reading that? As, one as Guardians well? or Guardians? Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, not Donnie. Guardians. I've been reading the As Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. Are you, you know, you love Donny Cates, right? right? I do love. It. Is he running this one? He's doing oh, Guardians I'll have of to the check Galaxy, it. and he's doing some crazy stuff right now. Oh, they're doing he like because Thanos is dead, and now he supposedly sent off a message to everyone. Oh wait, I have been reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new one where it's. Every fucking buddy guard. Yes, and they go to the fucking thing, and then the Black Order steals that. Yeah, I have. I love that though. They're kind of like, who's this like, new? Who's gonna be the new? Yeah, Thanos? what's going on now? Ah! I love that too, though. He's like, yeah, I'm. Not I mean, I love bitches. anything Donny Cates is doing right He's now, doing good and it's stuff, the best. Yeah. But I mean, that's pretty much it, though. That's I think all I we have did to say. cover pretty much everything. We covered the merger, trailers, new shit, old shit, coming shit, comic shit. Well, do we have at least one thing to look for for next one? At least, I think we have End Avengers, game. right? Yep, Endgame and <laughs> that's uh, in, Shazam's um, coming up. And if you haven't already done the preview Fandango no, tickets, I have not. Uh, but that should be coming up. What is that? The 26th, I think? Of uh, next month? No, this month. This or no, no, month? no, they changed really? it. It's, no, no, it's next month. I was going to say, I thought that was it Shazam's for this month. like April 12th or something. 5th, April 5th. But that's okay. still that's, only two yeah. weeks away. Yeah, that's not that far. And it'll be before Endgame. I would love to see Shazam do well. I love Zach- Zachary Levi. I like the light hearted tone. No, I, I don't think already, it's going to be that uh, well. They've already gotten good reviews from the critics as I've oh, heard. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and, I, and from the trailers, I feel like DC's finally kind of got their. They understand what they, they, need, what to they need to do. To yeah, do. Fucking, maybe not God. follow Marvel's formula. Just kind of do their own thing. And uh, this one looks like works. it'll be a little different. I'm hoping it won't be a hundred percent Marvel copy. Like, Paste yeah, like, like Wonder Guardians Woman the Galaxy. And, well, yeah, it kind of feels like that a little bit where it's gonna be kind of too. Gar- I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I don't think it'll be that. I think it's very much gonna be a kids movie. Yeah, maybe more of that. Maybe that's the feel I kind of I think that's the feel that's going to come from it. Feel. It's very much... And even maybe like the... Not so kiddie, but like the kid growing it up It makes thing. sense, though. I mean, it's... It's just him, man. It's, Why it's, wouldn't yeah. it be? It make no sense to have the character without Billy Batson being that unifying force. And in the comics, Billy Batson is a big part of the comic. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. He is a big part of... Maybe not as the total character, but as to how the story shapes and how everything else goes. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking excited... Looking forward to it. I'm excited. And uh, at least until next time, we're hoping people enjoyed the Thursday cast again. And yeah, we'll it be looks doing like we got a little bit more people coming in this. Got some uh, comments, at least. Even if it's just a Michael. I, th- I think it's a little bit better on a, on a weekday instead of a Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> Sunday everyone's just doing other shit, man. They want to relax. They and don't want to watch our ugly mugs. Yeah, <laughs> we can barely get them to stomach us on Thursdays. All right, well, thank you guys. This has been Comic Convos. Uh, I believe it's episode 77. Yes, yeah, 77. Hey, man, we're going to come up on 100 pretty soon. Sooner yeah, than later. That would be cool. Actually, if going by the week count near the end of the year, probably, or the beginning of next year, we'll be at 100 episodes. So yeah. maybe we can do something with all the money from our account. Yeah, we'll see. We'll have to figure out what we'll do. But all right. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right. Well, thank you guys all and have a good night.